All right, so we're now broadcasting live. Uh, let's just see. There we go. Okay, so we are now live. Hello, everybody. I see the numbers coming in as there we go, as we have just gone live. Welcome, everybody, as you come in. I hope that you are, and I'm sure that you are very excited, looking forward to this conversation with Jason Estes. Um, please do look around your screen. As you look around, you'll find the chat button. For those of you who have been with us every single day, you know exactly where it is. So please do greet us in the chat section. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to know who's with us. Um, hello from Kareen. Lisa sends hearts. Hello, Lisa. Lots of love and hearts back to you. Hello, wonderful Jenny, your darling Lenora. Pia, who's in Sweden, says hello and sends her love. Aloha from Hawaii. That's from Scott and Ali. Uh, we've got Sam Byrne in South Africa. Carmen, hello, sweetheart. So glad that you're here. Cricket. Oh, the names are just going too quickly for me to keep track of. <laughs> <laughs> so while you all send your hellos and your hearts and your introductions, this is my opportunity to introduce to you somebody who I am very sure the vast majority of you know, and this is Jason Estes. Jason has been a regular on my show for I don't even know how long, Jason. It feels like forever, but it's probably only a couple of months. Um, yeah, I, I don't even know. Maybe yeah. like 10 months, but 10 billion years at the same time. You see, it's that. It's exactly that. Yeah. Um, and so, Jason, your shows always have been so well received. So when it came to choosing speakers for Heaven's Gate, I knew that you had to be one of them. I'm so excited that you're here with Thank you for the honor to, to share about this. I mean, it's, it is truly a magical time on the planet. And I love that you felt the call to create an event around what's going on. Yeah. Because what's yeah. going on right now is not something that's ever gone on before. I mean, mm -hmm. in all the history of our universe, we've never had the experiences that we are having currently. And that's one of the reasons why we have so much support right now is because this is brand new. And everyone's just enjoying watching us. It's like, oh, you guys are going through this. What are you going to do next? It's like, we don't know what we're going to do next. It's really interesting. It, it's, it's a really great time to be alive, for sure. Yeah. Um, somebody, oh, I think when I first started interviewing you, which uh, was that 10 months slash 10 billion years ago, uh, somebody said, oh, you know, it's nonsense, people, because you, Jason, you, I think, are the only person, I'm really wrecking my brain right now, but I think you're the only person I know who gives us dates. And you yeah. give us extremely, extremely accurate dates. So much so that on the dates that you give us, I know you don't know this, but uh, there's almost always a noteworthy astronomical alignment on those dates. There's almost always a big spike in the Schumann resonance on those days. Um, nonetheless, you're the one that gives us these wonderful insights and foresights into what's coming in for us. And somebody said, well, that's not very cool. You know, I don't want to know my future. And I thought, well, you just don't get it because nobody knows. You don't know it and I yeah. don't know it. We just know when stuff is going down. So thank you, Jason, for always being there for us to provide us with insights. Thank you for being here at Heaven's Gate with us. Um, tell us about an hour in the here and now with Jason All Estes. Right. That's, the title. That's the title of today. And of course, I'm not restricting you to an hour. You've got as much time as you want. Exactly. Thank you very much for that. Yeah. So first of all, I just want to say to people, I'm not here to tell you how to live your life. I'm not here to do anything other than to share ideas and present new ways of looking at things. Like it's really about perspective. So when I give you dates, I'm not telling you that those dates are going to be miserable or horrible or all these other things. I'm saying, because I look at the time stream, I'm actually going to share how I do this now because so many people ask all the time. It's just, wow. it's finally time to, to share it. I look at something I call the time stream, which is the entire understanding of time and space as we understand it, but also as other beings understand it. So beings inside of time and outside of time, looking at the same equation, create this thing where time actually looks like a line, but it's not a linear line because the line goes off and it almost looks like a tree branch. So whenever major events occur, it causes splits in the, the tree branch of time because two different perspectives are seen at that same time, one outside of time, one inside of time. And so you're able to begin to see these things. I call these ripple events. Time spreads into different ways, which means that it's such a powerful event for the collective 
that it alters the way and the potential that we once had. And a lot of these events, when you get really good at paying attention to these events, you can start to kind of get a little depth into why they're, they're splitting in the way they're splitting. Also, if you look at them in enough advance, you can actually understand what happens because you have enough time to actually go into the future potential and begin to look at yourself and what's changed. And when you've done that, then you're able to apply all of those together. And I call it a mathematical algorithm, but really it's just understanding reality from the future version of you, talking to the present version of you, understanding it from the divine version of you outside of time, and then applying a perspective. And then you get the dates. And so it's really a simple process for people that are designed to do this. And a lot of people are like, well, I'm not designed to do this. And I go, that's totally fine because you're designed to do something way better. And my job is really just showing you that there are dates that you need to be aware of so that you can choose whenever you feel that density or that experience where you're just like, I don't want to let go. I can't handle this. I can't handle this to understand that there's a major event occurring that day. And it's okay that you're feeling that way. There's been a lot of uh, high level spiritual people lately, as I call them, who have been afraid to be imperfect. And I think that this is really an important thing. So this is what I'm starting out on today. And I talked about this on Todd's show, introducing this show. And I said, I'm going to be talking about the illusion of perfection. And so in order to really demonstrate the illusion of perfection, I've let my hair grow out and always possible to show you what it looks like to just be yourself. Like I didn't do anything special, grew myself any way special for this show. This is a paid show. This is a broadcasting. This is a professional event. And therefore I should look a certain way. Well, if I had fallen for that trap, I would have lost who I was and I wouldn't be able to show up for you in the way that I want to. So the way that I want to show up is myself. But if I'm showing up because of something else, then I'm not able to be myself. And that's a really important lesson to understand because it's impossible to be perfect. But you can be perfect for yourself. And there's a huge distinction there. No one in the world is going to say that you are perfect constantly, but you can feel perfect within yourself. And if you can do that, everything changes. Now, I'm not saying you should never cut, cut your hair or you know shave or anything like that, right? Like that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying don't do it for others. Because if I shave for another person, I have let go of my wisdom before it's time because of someone else. If I cut my hair for another person, I've let go of my ability to translate what I've learned using my wisdom for another person. Our hair is a very special thing. It doesn't just grow randomly. Just like everything that happens in your human anatomy doesn't just randomly happen. And as you get more in depth with your body, you're going to learn that every process is absolutely perfect. Every process, whether you're nauseous, whether you're dizzy, whether you're angry, whether you're upset, whether you're throwing a tantrum, it's all completely perfect if you're in alignment with yourself. Now, if you're throwing a, a tantrum for attention, again, you're not throwing that tantrum for yourself. You're throwing that tantrum to be seen by others, to be loved by others, because you're not able to love yourself enough. And again, I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. It's just about being aware of every action that you take and changing the purpose in that action from others to self. One of my mantras that I try to live by every day is to move without purpose is pointless. So in every movement, there can never be a pointless action. That is a cosmic law that we live in this universe. There will never be, and there has never been an action that was pointless. So it's either you moving you or something else moving you. And therefore you choose which one. So if you're on autopilot, something else is moving you. Meaning like you just somehow picked up this glass and started drinking it. And then you're like, whoa, what happened? That's something else moving you. If you consciously look at the glass, pick it up and then drink it, that's you moving you. Every time that you move you, you become closer to who you want to be. Every time something else moves you, you step further away from who you want to be. And this is really important moving forward because October is a massive, massive month of realignment and change. It is the month where we finally begin to know who we are. And I don't mean just the high level people on the planet who have done spiritual work for their whole life. I mean, every human being finally begins to learn who they are. 
we will begin a process that will take a while. I don't know how long. It can take up to 10 years. I don't think it will, but it can. And we will begin to realign and change and shift. Something that is really important to understand is right now the planet is made up of pretty much all females on the Ascension line. There's 600 million females and 10 million men. That's it. So right now it is a very strong feminine collective pattern. Now I'm not saying females are bad or good. I'm not saying men are bad or good. I'm simply stating that this is the ascended numbers currently. So women outnumber men massively currently. And that means that all the men are learning to be more feminine because the collective is more feminine than it's ever been. Usually the, the collective was masculine. Now I'm not saying it's going to stay like this. It's not. In May of next year, we actually come to a balance for the very first time where the collective is no longer male or female, but simply is. Mm. And that is the change point that we're all looking forward to because instead of me being a man and having to be a man and you being a woman and having to be a woman, I am and you are in the end. And so that phase doesn't just happen. And that's going to take me to the second most important thing I want to talk about today. And that is the illusion of ascension. Ascension is not a one time thing. Ascension is a every moment, every breath thing. So hear me when I say this. You ascend and descend by action alone. Everything that you do affects who you are and how much you are. So what's really important to understand is there isn't this, oh, I ascended, I made it, congratulations. No, you, you can ascend to new levels and you should always celebrate any action that brings you closer to ascension. Not saying that, but be prepared to descend and ascend as you move forward because it doesn't look like this always. In fact, most time it looks like this. Hmm. And I watched a really great video and I'll, I'll post it because it's just, it's really good, but it's this bear and it's this baby bear and they're climbing a snow capped mountain. And anyone who's seen this video understands this. The mom gets up really easy with no problem. And the baby's like, ah, and then slides down the mountain and then goes and slides down the mountain and then goes and slides. And then eventually he's like, you know what? I'm going to get on the mountain with my mom. And so he like cheats and goes to his mom's place and starts climbing. And the mom slaps the baby bear and knocks it all the way down to the base of the mountain. And then the baby bear has to climb up on its own. And then eventually she celebrates this baby bear and they move forward. Because it's not designed for a mom to always be that thing. Loving doesn't necessarily mean that you allow it to be easy. Because if it was easy, like let's just, say that that bear knows that in the future they're not going to be alive and their baby has to fend for themselves. If they can't climb a mountain with the mom there to take care of them, you know, it, it could be very dangerous. And it's the same process for us. Understanding that progress doesn't look like a straight line. Any time that you are alive, you are gaining progress towards whatever it is that you want in your life. Because time does equal experience eventually. Now, I really want to say the key word here is eventually. And the reason I'm saying eventually is because you might live 10 years completely unaware that you're alive, just completely on autopilot. But you have a moment of clarity and you wake up and you decide to look back at those 10 years. You can still gain the lesson and the value. There is no such thing as a wasted moment. There are moments that can be more beneficial and more valuable if you choose to go deeper into them, but there are no wasted moments. So everyone who's watching right now, just be aware that you are perfectly perfect where you are. And if you want to expand that perfection into greatness, go for it. But don't ever think that you are less than because you woke up later or because of these other things, because it's not relevant. All that is relevant is one thing, and it's that you're breathing right now. And if you can consciously breathe right now, even better. But if you are breathing right now, which means you are alive, you have made it to this moment and that is worthy of celebration. Mm. Thank you. Thank you for such great perspective. And thank you for the reminder that, <clears throat> that there's no such thing as a wasted moment. I hear you. It's kind of like 
you can have an unconscious moment or even an unconscious series of moments. Yeah. But, but we can always become conscious. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's really powerful. And I think it's also really powerful, by the way, to not look at ascension as a competition. Oh, yes. Yes. Collaboration <laughs> versus competition is like another new mantra that I've been hearing a lot lately and I'm in love yeah. with it. Yeah. When I hear people do that, it's just like, it's great. Uh, I posted a video on this actually on attention and understanding that attention and then paying attention. There's two different concepts behind it. But he says at the end, he says, I believe in collaboration versus competition. And so he creates this website where he plays a, a part of music and then he lets everyone else play with it. And he creates this video that's like 14 seconds long in this thing. And I, I mean, I cried after listening to it because it's called Hit Record. And it's literally just people all over the world wanting to play together. Mm. And they do. And it is mm. magical when they play together. And oh, mm. that's the world I want to be in. And the good news is I'm here right now in it. it. It actually is happening all around me all the time. But I might not be aware of it. And that's where we come together. And we begin to share awareness. And then we see that the world isn't this dark, doomed and gloomed place that everyone says it is. It's actually yeah. this beautiful, magical place where dreams are made possible every moment. Mm. Yeah. I'm so with you when you say it is happening around me right now. And it is why I was compelled to do Heaven's Gate and have these amazing speakers on. Every speaker has brought a next step and a next level and a next level and they are collectively, we are collectively coming together to remind ourselves as the audience, because that's, that's who we're speaking to, to remind ourselves that it is around us. It is happening now. There mm -hmm. is no more waiting. There is no more, oh, the government must do something. And, oh, my next door neighbor needs to do something else. And nobody needs to do anything to get you into your ascension process. Correct. Yeah. I mean, that's the most empowering yeah. message that you can ever hear too, is just realize like you're here, you made it, you're alive. All you have yeah. to do now is become more conscious and mm -hmm. becoming more conscious. Isn't something that anyone can lead you through. Yeah. I could give you the greatest guided meditation ever and all these other things. Right. But like in the end, that's a brief moment in your life and you still have all the other ones. Yeah. And again, Ascension isn't a moment that it happens. This is a big illusion. People are like, oh, I'm ascended and it's over. I've made it. And <laughs> yes. it doesn't work well because immediately the universe is like, oh, really? Here's this. It's about two <laughs> foot higher than where you think you are. What about that? And yeah. you're like, oh, well, my student can handle that because they're working towards ascension. And then eventually you don't have the wisdom and your student's above you and your student's like, hey, hey, look, look, look up just for a second. See, there's another level. Come with me. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's this process is like, you don't ever stop. You're always evolving. You're always expanding and you choose how fast you want to go. Mm. And this is also a very important concept because so many people think they have to give it all they are. Mm. And you didn't get to where you are giving it all that you are or immediately. Mm. The, no one on this channel right now that is here gave it all that they were every moment of every day to get to where you are. You, you didn't, you, you, you started out and you said, I'm going to give it this and see what happens. Okay, cool. That, that actually looks like it worked out really well. I'm going to give it this and see what happens, right? And yeah. this is really, really, really important because ascension is just like life. In fact, ascension becomes life. And it's not, I'm doing this to ascend. Because again, that is not a great idea. When you do something to get something, you are not being you. Be you and you will ascend naturally. The end. I, I promise this to anyone who's listening, be the best you you can be. A year from now, you will look back and go, wow, that was actually way easier than I thought it was. Mm -hmm. And you'll look at everyone else and they'll be like, I don't understand why it's so hard. And they'll be like, just be you. And then all of a sudden they'll be like, oh, this doesn't have to be hard. And you'll become an example. It doesn't take much to be an example in this world. It really doesn't. Just being you is the perfect example. So all you have to do is be willing to be you. Now that part, that part is a little bit more challenging because if you're you, like truly you, what if you're not accepted? That's the fear. That's what everyone has. Yeah. And that's okay too. 
Because if you aren't able to be you fully, you're not going to be fully accepted either. So what's the worst that can happen about being you and not being accepted? You might be rejected, right? And that's not a bad deal. Like, I'm rejected. Oh, well, let's see. I can choose to go into that rejection, learn why I was rejected. And this doesn't mean looking at another person either. This is important. So we're going to pretend that I was just rejected. And we're going to go through a really fun hypothetical because fear of rejection is a big deal. So I'm me, I do this show, someone watches it, they send me a really hateful message and say, you're full of shit, you don't know what you're talking about, all these things, blah, 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 blah. And I go, cool, thank you for that reflection. So now let's look into that reflection. Now I'm not looking at this person because this person's irrelevant. They have nothing to do with my process unless I let them. And that's really an important step to understand is no one outside of your own mind is part of your process unless you let them. The government isn't part of your process unless you let them. Your spouse isn't part of your process unless you let them. Your neighbor, your cat, your dog, your environment, it doesn't matter. It's not part of the process unless you let it. So I go in and I go, okay, what part of me needed to feel like I was full of shit? What part of me needed to be something else? And what can I do about that? And for me personally, I wrote a process called Remembering Unity, which is about acknowledging that there are parts of us that are not us and integrating those parts. So what I would do is I would go, the parts of me that need to feel like they're full of shit are now being released and cleared from around me, right? And now I can see clearly and I go, okay, now the parts of myself that are full of shit, I ask they integrate into the wholeness of the fulfilled I am that I am. And from that wholly fulfilled I am that I am, I choose to know that I know what I know. And I choose to know that I don't know what I don't know. And I choose to be okay in that. And see, what I've done is I've taken the parts of me and I've cleared out the distortions, right? And then I've said, okay, that fragment of myself that was highlighted just now, because the only time you're ever triggered by anything is if something is highlighted within you, is now being integrated into the wholeness of the fulfilled I am that I am. Basically, I'm saying, I know that I'm fragmented and that's okay. I'm going to integrate that with love, acceptance, and no judgment into who I am. And now here's the great thing. That person who sent you that horrible thing or whatever is irrelevant because what happened was they highlighted a little piece for you. You integrated it into who you are and now you're expanded a little bit further and you're going to feel this great feeling. It's going to feel wonderful because you're going to be more whole. And that's what life is. Life is putting ourselves back together so that we can be all that we are so that we can walk into heaven and the gates open. It's been open actually for, thousands of years we just forgot there was a gate now that we yeah. know the gate's open now that we know how to get into the gate all we have to do is apply what we learned and heal and yeah that means that there are going to be highlights because every time that you level up you expand into a larger space so if you start here and you bring more of who you are in you're now here well all that space right there is what i have to be responsible for then I expand again because I'm responsible. Oh, now I feel responsible for this. Oh, now I feel responsible for this. Oh, until eventually it's the whole room, the whole universe, the whole cosmos, and now even the whole omniverse. So as we level up, we're given more responsibility, but we're also given more ability and clarity. So the problems that we once had that were impossible, we look at them and we're like, that's insignificant. Sorted, done, moving on. And anyone who's watching who did spiritual work 10 years ago, knows that that is a true case because today it takes minutes to go yeah. through a process that would take years, years. And I mean literal years to solve something. You can do it minutes now. And by May, it'll be seconds. So we're progressing faster and faster. And the only ask is that we progress fast enough that we can stay in phase with the world. That's it. That's the only ask we have. And it's not even that big of an ask because the baseline is really low. <laughs> All you have to do, be yourself as best you can and be willing to forgive yourself along the way. That's it. That's all there is. That's ascension in a nutshell. Be yourself as best you can and forgive yourself along the way. No one, including myself, is perfect 100% of the time. I can be as perfect as I can be within me and that's as best as I can do. And I'm not going to make everyone happy. And I don't want to make everyone happy because if I make everyone happy, then I'm not being myself. Mm. One of the greatest lessons I learned, I learned this as a kid, be who you are 100% of the time if you can, because no one manifested you into their life as anything other than that. 
So if you have something to say and you feel called to express it and you're in a circle of friends and you don't express it, you're not being true to who you are or their reflection. And that's important to understand because there's two different levels there feeling called to express something and wanting to express something. What I have found is when I'm quiet in a group and I just let people express, what I want to express is usually said back and forth all the time. I don't even have to say anything. I can hear it and be like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, that would be great to say. And then I watch someone else say it and I'm like, wow, that's incredible. But then I see that they gain so much more from saying it and I gain so much more from hearing it than I would have ever from actually saying it. <laughs> because that's collaboration. That's the ability to let others also have moments. I want to tell you, uh, as you were talking, I was thinking about an incident. When I first started interviewing you on my show, there was somebody in the background of an audience who had something very vocal to say about you. Uh, and it was negative. And that person contacted me and um, I thought, whoa, you know, I, I don't know what to do with this. So Jason, and I contacted you and I said, what do I do? You know, there's this person and they're, they're, they're saying not nice things about you. And I just want to tell the audience, Jason, you taught me the most amazing thing and I don't think I'll ever forget it because it was so profound. You told me the truth of what had happened. And I said to you, oh my gosh, you need to tell people, you need to tell people your side of the story. And you said, no, I don't. I don't need, I can't remember the word you used, but I don't need to put somebody else down in order to raise myself, in order to make myself yeah. more. And I was like, jaw on the floor, because I knew that you were speaking absolute truth in that moment. You could have, in an instant, said everything right. You could have even turned people against the one who was bad-mouthing you because you had every right and recourse to do that. But you didn't. Yeah. You didn't. You, you were so centered. And you taught me so much in your centeredness because it was one of my great fears that through learning from you, I overcame. And mm -hmm. I played it over and over and over, over and over and over wow, I don't need to make somebody smaller in order to make myself more. Yeah. You, you didn't go into defense. You, just, you were really in allowance. It was an amazing thing to witness. Really, it was. That's beautiful to hear. That same experience was really challenging several years ago. But mm. as I accepted it and began to work through all the stuff that came up, I learned a lot about myself in the process. And ultimately, I can't fault someone for helping me to learn a lesson, right? Like mm. I can, I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. I can choose to fault someone for helping mm. me learn a lesson, but in the end, what does that do other than create a harder lesson for me and for them? There's no real point in ever putting anyone down. It's simply just, hey, thank you for what you're saying. Thank you for that reflection. I'll work on it and then you move forward. And a lot of people get irritated by that. They get offended by that. They think you're not really listening to them, but you're actually listening to them so clearly that you know that that reflection is important to you and you're going to do the work on it and then you move on right because that person you're talking about that's not a person i want to be around but that doesn't mean that i don't love them there is more love for myself than there isn't and that's the key so i like that because this is going to happen to you guys out there who are watching this is going to happen as you become an example of yourself in the world you're going to have people that don't understand it. They aren't going to like it because you're going to be bright. And when you're bright, you cast shadows on everything. Now, this is important. That shadow is already there. But your light is illuminating that shadow at a whole other level. And so what happens, and this is, I've seen this happen with every one of my students. I've seen this happen. Actually, pretty much anyone that I know that's a good person. I've seen this happen. When you become good, instead of just being something that someone else wants you to be, you begin to, to glow and emanate and the world around you falls apart because the world around you wasn't built for you. It was built for others through you. And that's what I call remote terminaling. You literally are building the world for someone else when you're not yourself, whether that be something else, someone else, I don't really care because in the end it's not you. 
And that's the most important thing. Again, we can go into story. I could like tell you all of this crazy stuff that's irrelevant. And you could spend hours laughing and being terrified and all these things of this amazing stuff right here. Or you could just get the lesson. It's a really easy lesson. If you aren't building for you, you're building for someone else. And if you're building for someone else, your world isn't going to be as fun as it could be. But if you build for you as you, your world will become more and more amazing each day. And it doesn't matter if you were building for someone else. You don't have to blame or shame that person. You don't have to even acknowledge that person. Just acknowledge the truth. I was building for someone else. I choose not to anymore. I'm going to build for me and be prepared to build for others again. It's going to happen, right? That's okay. But if you build for you enough, what's going to happen is you're going to run into others who are building for them enough in the same area that you're going to begin to collaborate on things that are just mind blowing things you can't even imagine. So a great example of this, I stopped building for others probably about five years ago, consciously every moment doing my best to make sure that it wouldn't happen again. I went from being in debt to being a millionaire. I went from being a millionaire into having an opportunity to build the world of my dreams. And now I have found more and more collaborators on this vision that we actually have our first center we're going to begin the groundbreaking ceremony in December. Everything is coming together perfectly. The fifth dimensional research and development company, I found people that can actually understand the vision of it and are beginning to develop fifth dimensional products. Like it's incredible what can happen, but I can promise you this. If I was not myself, those opportunities that led to those experiences that led to that expansion that led to me going deeper into being myself would never have happened. And I would never have been able to build this land for the world. Because Center for Expansion is a nonprofit. It is a place where all the teachers, the best teachers in the world, will be available for donation. Like, they're going to be there. Like, you don't even have to donate. You can just go into the space. The land will be open all day. Like, it is a playground for the spiritual being to remember what it means to be ascended. That is what I'm designing. And I'm building 55 of them around the world. That vision is so big that it is impossible to do alone. And that used to terrify me. Since I was very young, I knew that this was my, my mission, this was my purpose. And I thought I had to do it alone. I literally thought I had to do it alone. Because it's like, there's no one else here, this is impossible, I can't understand why. Why would I have come to this freaking planet? This is a horrible experience. And it was because everyone I was watching was living for other people. And I couldn't understand the value of what we could be if we lived as ourselves, because it wasn't until I started living as myself that I began to find people like me and that were willing to be themselves. And that's when my life became heaven on earth, literally heaven on earth. I, I can't even, I mean, I'm not to say that there weren't challenges, that there weren't opportunities to learn to expand into myself further and grow further. Cause trust me, my life has been full of those, but each one of those I looked at from a gratitude perspective eventually, keyword eventually, and was able to come out of it as more of who I am. So every person who's ever doubted me or hated me or been angry with me, I'm grateful for them because they showed me parts of myself that doubted myself. Until now I come to the space where I'm like, I know who I am, I know why I am, I'm ready to do what I am here to do, and I'm not going to be less. And I don't care how many people that pisses off because those people are eventually going to be grateful for this too. And that, that doesn't mean that I go to those people and I say, Hey, you're not living who you are, be who you are. Cause that's not my place. I get asked a lot of questions in a uh, private message. And one of the most common questions is what about this person who is being mean to me? How are they going to be punished? And I say, you're looking at it wrong. This person being mean to you is for a reason. Why are they being mean to you? And why do you care if they're punished? Do you know how much time we invest in wanting other people to be harmed or slowed down or punished for their process? Every thought that that takes from us takes from us, literally. It costs us mental bandwidth to think about others in any form. Stop. That's it. Just stop. Let it go. Take everything that you think about anyone else and let it go and be you. 
put all that energy that you were wasting on others into yourself and you will grow like those trees in the background of Carrie's thing and create a canopy for those that you love and they will have shade and it will cost them less water and they will evolve faster because they have an example. But if you're so busy trying to compare yourself to others, trying to do all these things about everyone else, you're not going to grow and you're not going to be an example. And they wanted you in their life to be an example so they could grow too. That's what heaven is. Heaven is the vision where we're all free and each are freeing each other. That's heaven. And we can't be there until we're all free and each are freeing each other. We can experience it. That's it. But being there truly 100% for the rest of existence requires the baseline raised with us. So those who are examples, you're going to have people come to you and say, hey, how did you get here? And don't be someone that goes, well, I got here by blah, 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 blah. Instead, be like, how do you think I got here? Really invite the question for them to explore. Don't take how you got somewhere and make it truth. Make it your truth, absolutely. But it isn't about you anymore. Once you're there, it's about the example that you are, and that's it. And you know that when you get there. When you get there, you're like, oh, wow, I really shouldn't say anything other than just be this. This is cool. And then others come to you, and they ask you questions, and you ask them questions, and they ask you questions. And then all of a sudden, you're watching this tree, and it starts here, right? It's like they're asking questions. You're, you're not answering those questions. You're asking them more questions. And then they're here and then you're like, oh, wow, you're an example of this now. Cool. And then you grow and then they grow and then you grow and then they grow. And then another tree comes up and it's like down here. And they're looking at both of you going, hey, how did you guys get there? And we're like, hey, how do you think we got here? And then slowly but surely you have a forest around you. And then everyone is looking from a higher perspective at a greater game. And the world changes forever. And that's heaven. Yeah. You said um, earlier you said we've just we've got to be who we are you said it so simply just be you just be you and and i want to add that what it takes to just be you is humility it's the gift of humility the ability to be humble which means not always right which mm. means sometimes mistaken which means human yeah. which means fallible and imperfect and everything that we were taught, you know, that we couldn't show the world. We were taught that we couldn't show the world how fallible we actually were. So we learned early, we learned to disguise all of the stuff. But what you're saying is really giving everybody permission yeah. to just instantaneously, because we now have the gift of moving forward in an instant to instantaneously look at that and go, Oh, wow. It just doesn't apply to who I am anymore. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's easier. It's nicer. It's more freeing. It's more expanding. It's more beautiful to be in humility, to be humble. And that allows you, from my experience, to just be you. I'm glad that you brought up humility, for sure. Because mm -hmm. that's another big illusion in the spiritual world today, is humility is one thing. No. Yeah. Humility is... Uh, owning what you don't know, but also owning what you do know, both aspects. Mm. So mm. if I don't know something, that's okay. That's totally fine. In fact, that's more than fine. That's normal. There is no one on this planet who is not a liar, who knows everything. <laughs> it's, it's not designed that way. That's not why we're here. But there are people who do know things. I get called arrogant a lot because I know a lot of things. But if anyone wants to ask me questions around those things, I can defend every possible angle of those things that I discuss. Because if I don't have mastery over something, I won't share it. It's that simple. If I do not have mastery over something, I know that someone else does. And I don't want to take their time in the spotlight because their time in the spotlight is more powerful than mine. Now, I'm not saying that I'm less than this person. And it's very important that everyone gets this because that person having time on a larger platform 
that I'm not taking AKA attention because all we have in this world is time. That's it. That's it. Everything else is all part of understanding time and becoming responsible with it. That's really all there is. But you, you only have one resource in life that you don't get back and that's time. That's it. So if you give an hour of your time to this show and I'm not capable of helping you see something different in that hour of time, you've wasted your time. Does it mean that you've wasted it completely? No, because in the long run, again, if you zoom out far enough, nothing is ever wasted. At the very worst, you learned that I'm not someone you ever want to hear from again. And that is a very valuable thing. The end, right? <laughs> so it's not about understanding things from that more as it's evolving and growing. But when you're in a group of people, and this is really important, it's not always you who's supposed to be the one speaking. So if you're in a group of people and you're the best at whatever is needed to be said in that group of people, go ahead and take a breath, pause for a second, go inward and be like, am I really the best at what's being spoken right now? Listening to everyone else discuss, get to know the room, get to know who's in the room and get to know why the room is coming together. And then if you feel deeply that you're the best and most qualified to handle whatever the room is needing, then by all means, step up and take that attention and begin that process because that's you being called to come forward. Now, if you're in the room and you're doubting whether you're the best to speak, don't speak yet. Pause and be like, okay, I'm going to read the room a little bit more. Going to get to know the room a bit more, see what they're really going on. Because that pause that you're taking isn't taking away from anyone else. But if you speak and you're not the one that's supposed to be speaking in that moment, you are taking away from everyone else. This is something I call false expression. And it's very common. People, when they wake up, the very first thing they do is they think that they know more than everyone else and are better than everyone else. I'm not saying this is everyone, but when you first wake up, it is everyone. <laughs> Literally everyone I've ever met, including myself, was like, my mission is to change the world. And then as you slowly realize who you actually are, you go, my mission is to be myself in the world. Okay, yeah, that's a very big difference. And I need to change myself, but I want the world to change. So I'm going to keep doing that. <laughs> when you first wake up, your eyes like light up and you're just like, it's to change the world. You have to listen to me. And what you're doing is you're taking more from the world than you're actually giving because you're not being that example. And anyone who's being honest right now has done that. Everyone who is being honest, who is awake has done that. And that's okay. Again, that's you learning. And that time is valuable. You learned, but you learned on others. It's better to learn in yourself because you have infinite space here to learn and you don't have to take other people's space. So be aware of that. If you want to truly be humble, then be in the space as yourself and know when to speak and when not to. That's it. It's that simple. A lot of times when I go to spaces, it's a spiritual space because those are the places I really like to be. And I choose not to talk very often in those spaces because it's really fun to see where people are. And then eventually I end up being the one talking and leading the space because it's just what happens. It's not because I want to be there and leave the space. I look forward to the day that I go into a room and I just get to be quiet the whole time and never talk and just observe. But it just doesn't happen very often because of the spaces I go to. Now, a great example, I went to a cryptocurrency summit last year. I didn't talk very much at all. In fact, I just sat there and was like, this exists. This is like everything I've ever wanted to understand. And it's all right there. And I didn't talk much because there wasn't much to say because I am a novice of cryptocurrency. I have no clue. I understand enough about it that this goes here and this goes here and that it makes this. That's as far as my understanding goes. But I was in a summit of masters of cryptocurrency. I could have wasted so many people's time in that moment by speaking and taking over and being like, well, what about the spiritual thing? Blah, blah, blah. And I could have been the bully. I could have done that. I could have used my value and my power to assert it and change the entire flow of the room. And I've seen this happen a lot with newly awakened beings. They want to be loud. They want to throw tantrums. They want the attention. They want all these things. And they don't know they want these things. But ask yourself if you're in that state. And if you are in that state, pause. Be aware of it. Because humility isn't just being quiet, but it's also speaking when it's time to speak. And it's learning to be both. 
we're taught one way, which is a polar way. And it's really important when you get taught both because it's okay to know what you know. In fact, it's great. It's wonderful to know what you know. If you know that you're the best at something in the room and that's the, what the room wants, awesome. Congratulations. Have a great time. Speak, share, have people's attention. Do with it the right thing and you're going to find that you grow more and they grow more. And that's a perfect moment lived. A perfect moment lived is when two people grow together. That's it. Just like the, I love your background today. It's like the perfect background because <laughs> it's a perfect example of what I'm talking about. Those yeah. trees lived the perfect moment and that's why they're so beautiful and, and amazing. And that's when we love forests because they're always in collaboration. Yes. Yes. That's the truth. Thank you for that. Thank you for reminding us. Um, you know, so often I do get to speak to people and, and I do love listening. I really do. I, I, I enjoy listening because people actually say more than they think they're saying. When you really know how to listen to somebody, you stop listening to the words that they speak and you, you tune in and you can truly get them on a deeper level. You can truly feel them. And there's something very valuable in learning how to listen. Um, I think we all know how to speak. We've kind of got that. But for many people, learning how to listen can be more valuable than actually learning how to speak or finding their voice even. So there's profound power in that. And um, something else that I wanted to mention, Jason, and, and, and you've, really, you've really highlighted it already, but I want to draw everybody's awareness to it because so often, you say things, and I have many speakers like you who say things and don't realize necessarily the profoundity for everybody of what you say, because it's so normal for you, you know, but you were talking earlier about just be you and, and just be where you are. But, and, and I said, yes, that requires humility, but I, I realize also it requires you to step out of judgment of self yeah. in order to do that. And just today, and no doubt there will be many more examples of this. But just today in social media, I became acutely aware of a very divisive topic at the moment on climate change. There's a young girl speaking out. My God, everyone has an opinion. And everybody is so invested in how correct their opinion is that they're missing the point. If you step back from that and you just listen and you just don't take sides, don't take sides, but just listen to what's going on. What you'll realize is that what is going on is division. Yep. And it's just, it's wearing right now, it's wearing a guise called climate change, but I promise you it will dress up in a thousand different costumes as we go forward. And it has been in the past in millions more. But don't look at the costume that it's wearing and don't listen to the debate around it look at the whole thing and go what is really happening here because what's really happening here is judgment which creates division which is the opposite of heaven and unity and peace and sensitiveness and everything that we crave yeah so so you you, you speak so beautifully from that place of having completely bypass your own judgment of self and when that happens because that is the critical thing that allows you to then not extend that judgment to all others and all other situations and then waste your resources your time and your energy investing in righteousness yeah yeah i think that as long so, as you're gonna be right mm -hmm. then you're going to be wrong hmm because <laughs> climate change is a great topic it's a great topic it's a wonderful thing and i'm glad that we're exploring it as a planet but it doesn't mean that one side's right and one side's wrong mm -hmm. and that's the issue like any issue that you have in the world when you make something wrong any issue mm -hmm. you are already moving away from the truth of it because nothing is inherently wrong or right it just is yeah. so if you can pause to understand the point of view that they're coming from and then counter with your own point of view, but in a way that isn't hurting their point of view, mm. most of the time you can find a middle ground and you both expand and grow in it. 
Yeah. It's when one person is so set in their ways that the discussion is no longer a discussion. It's an argument. And at that point, you just walk away because there's nothing you can do to change a person's mind. Yeah. For anyone that believes that there is, I'm not going to say you're wrong. Because again, <laughs> but feel free to explain to me how. Because my whole life has showed me that you cannot change a person's mind. You can't. You can be an example and they can change their mind. But in the end, why do you want to change another person's mind? Mm -hmm. at, the, at the very core of it, it's really not about whether you're right or wrong to other people. It's whether you're right or wrong to yourself. Mm -hmm. So if you're relying on external forces to prove whether you're right or wrong, be prepared for a hard life. Mm -hmm. Because oftentimes the external forces are designed to test your inherent value. They're designed to show you whether you believe you're right or wrong, not whether you're right or wrong, but whether you believe it. Because if you believe that you are the most amazing person in the entire universe, that's cool. That's totally fine. Nothing wrong with that. Be prepared for things to say there's something wrong with that. And if you can hold that you're still the most perfect and beautiful being in the entire universe, maybe you are. Maybe you are. And that's awesome. I'm not going to say you aren't or you are. But you know what you actually are. And the world will keep pushing on those buttons until you actually believe what you're saying. And that's October for you, in a nutshell. October <laughs> is literally going to be the most immense, like, ugh, it's pure truth, but it's like ridiculous level of truth that's going to highlight everything that isn't true in you. And it's going to make a lot of people upset. People are going to be very angry around it. It's going to be beautiful and amazing. I cannot wait for that hammer to smash through the illusion of spirituality and people's fragmented belief structures around what is real and what isn't to fall to the ground and then to see through for the very first time the veil and understand the world and go, oh, wow, well, I can't be what I was anymore because what I was was a reflection of what everyone wanted me to be and I don't wanna be that anymore. When that is humanity's baseline, I will be the happiest person to ever exist on this planet. And I'll be proven wrong in that, and that'll be fine. But <laughs> in that moment, I will definitely be very happy. I'll just say that. Yeah. Because yeah. When, when the world realizes the game they've been playing isn't their own, and they finally start to play their own game, the real reason we came to Earth will begin. And that, to me, is what Heaven's Gate represents, is this step saying, hey, look, here are some people who have done really good in their life. They understand a lot of things and they're going to be examples of it on the show for you. I'm not saying that what they're saying is true or wrong or right. It doesn't matter, but they believe it's true and they believe it's right. And so they're worthy of listening to if you feel called to the end, that's it. You know, there's something that's going to happen pretty soon with MTVO. It's an organization, right? That I'm part of an we decided that we're removing likes and views and all those other things. And we're building our own platform because it's not about whether someone likes it or views it or hearts it or down thumbs it or angry face them even. It's not, it's not about that. It's about you sharing because you feel called to share and that's it. You're done. You, you share whatever happens with that is irrelevant. So we're actually going to be removing all those things because we decided that, just doesn't make sense anymore hmm. to care about anything other than the content that's being shared and then move on. Hmm. And I, I feel yeah. like that's, that's where the world's headed. The world's yeah. headed yeah. to a place where it's not about how many likes you get or all these other things. It's simply about doing things because it's right and hmm. doing it because it's right for you. Not doing it because it's right for the world. Because if you do something for, for the world that's right, it might be a good thing that you're doing for the world, but it's for the wrong reason. Mm. If you do something because it's right for you and it aligns with the world, congratulations, you have figured out how to collaborate with the world and have moved this, the entire planet's evolution a step further. So thank you. But if you do something because it's right for the world, but it hurts you in the process, you've taken us a step backwards. So be aware that good means good for both, not just good. That's so, wow. That is really, <laughs> that, 
do you know it's the simple truths that never fail to amaze me? Those are the ones that just leave me speechless. And that one did right there. Good means good for both. Yeah. That is a real wow. Thank you for that. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Anna Isabel left a beautiful comment. And thank you to everybody who has been commenting as we're chatting. Anna Isabel left a beautiful comment as we were talking about divisiveness and judgment and so forth. And she said, but also there are many who are already not taking sides and just listening. At least she says, this is what I am observing in many comments. So what I love about that comment that Anna Isabel left right there is that she's observing her world. Yeah. That's a reflection of her. Because another person would say, all I see everywhere is division. And another person would say, all I see everywhere is love. Yep. And that's a beautiful reflection of who you are. Um, there's something so beautiful. And I have people tell me this often. I, everyone's become so positive on Facebook lately. And I go, no, they really haven't. But in your reality, they have. And yep. <laughs> and that's worth celebrating. When that you is start definitely playing. worth celebrating. When your small world becomes beautiful and amazing, it's because you are beautiful and amazing. Yeah. That, that means you cleaned up the toxicity in your world. Yeah. I was watching yeah. a, a video that someone sent me, and it was on Facebook. And it was really fascinating because it was the NLP value of Facebook and, like, the manipulation and the aspects of it. And, mm -hmm. again, I don't judge the process. I just acknowledge that it's a thing and mm -hmm. that it's – is designed perfectly using another concept and it's the newsfeed. It allows you to feel a, a sense of instant gratification, which actually releases certain things in your brain and everything. And so this person designed an app that you can install on your browser that deletes your, your newsfeed. It makes it where it doesn't show up. And I was like, well, that's really a fascinating concept that we need someone else to develop an app so that we can be responsible. See, for me personally, the way that I do it is I unfollow everyone who I don't want to hear. And then I always ask myself, well, okay, if I'm unfollowing them because I don't want to hear them, why do I want them? Yeah. Right? Like, we have a choice. And I think social media is an experience in that. I think that social media is actually going to be the reason that we ascend this lifetime. And I, I know a lot of people will disagree with me on this. And that's, again, it's totally fine. But my point is this. If social media is a tool, that's it. Is it a bad tool or a good tool? Does it matter? No, because it's a tool, right? Guns are guns, the end. Mm. What you do with the tool is really up to you. So one thing, if anyone follows me on Facebook, you know, is I will not waste your attention. I will never post anything that is relevant. And you can go back through my wall for the last five years and you'll find the same truth. Mm. The reason is because... I don't use the tool for anything other than an example. And I only share on my Facebook wall when it's important or valuable. And MTVO does the same thing with our Instagram account. We do share daily, but we share things that actually help the world to get become better. And we pause before we share. Because that simple pause before you do an action is what makes something good for both instead of just good for you. That's it. It's a simple pause. So... When you think of social media as a toxic place or a bad place or anything of that nature, that's cool. You can totally do that. I'm not saying it's wrong or right. I'm simply saying maybe take a step back and look at the tool that is social media and see all the good that it can do too. Because my wall makes me happy every day. I see people, I don't even have to comment that often anymore. I, I, I just sit back and I watch this beautiful thing of this community that has been built answering each other's things. And I don't even have to delete comments or regulate it anymore. Years ago, people would like go, oh, you believe this thing and it's got to be wrong. And then they would like have like fights on my wall and it'd be like, okay, you're both in timeout. Message me back in like six months if you decide to want to do that because arguing isn't something I accept on my wall. But what's become of it now is like I'll post an update and then immediately after like hundreds of comments will appear. And it will be people collaborating, sharing stories, helping each other to heal. And it has become this phenomenon that I could never have anticipated or believed would even ever happen. 
Mm. And it has become such a humbling experience for me to sit back and just watch it. Yeah. Because it's so beautiful. And that right there is what social media can do. It can bring people together. It can help people realize they're not alone. And I honestly can tell you as a little kid, when I woke up and I knew who I was and I understood that there was no one else like me on the planet at that moment, if I had social media back then and another kid had come up and said, hey, I'm also going through these things, my life would have been much easier for me because they wouldn't have known that I was alone. And I wouldn't have been alone. I would have had someone to talk to. But see, when I grew up, there wasn't social media. There wasn't even computers yet. That came much later. So the, the point is, social media can be a force for good if we work towards being good within ourselves and taking that pause to be good for ourselves and the world. If we reclaim our walls, and I've said this on many shows, but people still haven't done it, and that's okay. If we reclaim our walls, if we stop letting other people speak through us, on social media and instead speak for ourselves on social media, we can change the world by being an example on social media. And that is, that is what I think we're ascending. That in movies and TV shows, definitely movies. And also pizza, definitely. Well, pizza. Of course, pizza. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like pizza is, yeah, that's like a key ingredient to the ascension of this lifetime. Uh, that being said, though, with social media, with movies, with TV shows, we're able to experience depth and experience concepts that are shared and collaborated so much deeper than we ever have. And it is that reason that we're coming together. It is that reason that we have so many things to share about. Books are the same thing, right? Like, if you read a good book and you wanted to share that with another person who read a good book, you guys have opinions on that book. And if you meet each other in a good space because you're both being good for each other, you can unlock something that that book could never have taught either of you. Yeah. And that's about yeah. sharing your perspective, but doing it for the right reason, for yourself. It's yeah. not about being selfish in the sense that the world talks about it. Being selfish. in the world talks about it, it means taking other people's attention set them for people's attention be grateful and then be humble in that experience and say thank you because gratitude balances attention if done properly gratitude is the highest currency i think that exists honestly yeah your point about and and you have spoken about it often your point about when we forward things on social media to personalize it and to share why you're posting it or what you think about it or whatever it is that motivated you to forward it in the first place so that you're not mindlessly forwarding other people's energy or other people's information. You've spoken about that and it really hit home for me. I've always done that automatically. It never appeared right to me to not put my own text, even if it was just a word, yeah. um, onto something. But nonetheless, I've got a Facebook group called Samadhi Tribe of One. And that is one of the rules of the group is you may not share something and people share prolifically on the group and, and it's beautiful information, but as beautiful as it is, the rule is you may not share information that some, comes from somebody else until you personalize it. So I've got a group of admins who on a daily basis, they're so devoted and they're so amazing on a daily basis, they go to people and they go, no, nope, can't approve your post, can't approve your post, can't approve your post because you need to personalize it. And we explain and we re-explain, but I know that everybody's going to get it. And, and a lot of people comment that the vibe in the group is different. Yeah, because it's themselves, definitely. Yeah. yeah. It's the same thing, like, if we just take the time to be ourselves, that's it. And I can't think of another thing that's worth taking time for, honestly, but... Mm -hmm. If we just take it just a little bit, just a little bit of time for ourselves, which is hard for the average person because the average person doesn't have any time for themselves left over at the end of the day, which it should be the opposite. At the end of the day, you should have had plenty of time for yourself and are ready to share with the world. Mm -hmm. But it's not that way. And that's because we've been conditioned to believe that our attention and our value is designed for others, that we are a platform for another person, not ourselves. There's one other thing I really want to share about MTVO because it's something that I believe is the new way. And I'm not saying that MTVO is the new way. I'm saying that it's something we're trying very desperately to become an example of in this world is 
collaboration at the highest level. So our tagline is MTVO team. And it took us like six months to agree on a name because we all had all these great names and everyone in MTVO is a leader. So everyone's point is valid. And therefore it's like, okay, well, you like this and I like this. And, like, and we got to go through the internal thing of like, well, my answer has got to be right. And yours has got to be wrong. We had to heal through all of that. We're not being an example because we just were born this way. We're being an example because we were born as something else and realized that that's not what we wanted to be. And that's why we became an example. You know, it, it's not about the other thing. And team aspect means that we don't own anything or anyone. And that's, that's what I really want spirituality to become someday is not owning clients, not owning ideas, not owning, just simply that's it. And if you really want to put quotes, that's cool. Just put God in the quotes and be done. <laughs> and then like that, that's it, right? Like cool. that's yeah. the world that we're moving towards. And I see it every day. I step back enough that I watch the world and I love watching the world. It's one of my favorite things since I was a little kid. I loved watching mm -hmm. the world because it always confused me. And I love yeah. being in that space of perplexion because you're looking at the world and you're like, what? what are they doing? Yeah. How? But why? And then you begin to stop asking those questions and instead observe the interaction and then the hows and the whys all come to you naturally. And then you're able to use what I call similarities and intricacies and apply what you learned here to this situation here. And then all of a sudden this makes sense. And then this makes sense. And then this makes sense. And then until everything makes sense. But you don't really understand that until you stop asking the hows and whys. Because to ask how and why is to analyze. And if you analyze an experience, you miss the point. Yeah. It's that simple. Absolutely. Analyzation is actually a fourth dimensional principle. It's a great gift for you to unlock your own potential and power. Great gift. But it's also a temporary one because eventually it's time to let that analyzing go. I have seen so many amazing people fall short of greatness. And the reason they fall short of greatness is because they have to know why they are worthy of greatness. And instead of it being something that they earned through being, it's something they have to understand. And I've been very fortunate because when I first started becoming a healer, I don't know, it was like, oh God, so long ago at this point, I can't even remember. But I met this other healer and they were extremely good with working with star societies. Like that was their specialty. They knew it. And I asked them, I said, you know, you just did this amazing session for me. It changed my life. How'd you do it? And he said, I asked them once. One time I was like, hey, you know, how did you guys do that? And they said, it would take you several billion of your earth lifetimes for us to explain what happened in an instant. Are you ready? And the person said, no, I'm good. Totally good. I don't, yeah, no, no need. And the way they explained that moment to me taught me everything I needed to know. If you do something and it changes the world in a positive way and it changes you in a positive way, do you need to know why? Mm. And I've seen so many people fall short because they do. And that's okay. I'm not saying that it, it's wrong. Just be aware that you are in a human existence and what you can understand and fathom is very low in comparison to the things that are magical in this world. Trees are able to process information and energy much more efficient than human beings, way more efficient than human beings. Mm. Have you ever asked a tree to explain how? If you do and the tree decides to talk to you, which if you can hear it, they always are talking to you. Trees are the most talkative beings on this planet. They, they talk a lot, but they won't try to teach you how. They'll ask you why you want to know how. And then they'll continue to ask you lots of questions, which is why I love trees, because they love to ask questions instead of answer them. Wow. And some of the greatest teachers I've ever met in this life just ask questions. Mm. Mm. Absolutely. Jason, what do we need to walk through October as gracefully as we can? Be yourself at all costs. We have a mantra in MTVO. It's authenticity at all costs, all costs. Because there is nothing more valuable to you than you. That's it. And if that is not true for you right now, that's okay too. Don't judge it. Because that's the other thing that I would say. Do not judge yourself for what you do not know. Instead, celebrate that which you do. That's it. That's all I ever is going to take, honestly. As the energy raises, 
it's only raising into higher levels of truth. The astral frequencies are dwindling and the celestial frequencies are expanding. So if you are you, you're already celestial, the end. It's, it's not like you're not becoming this great thing. You already are this great thing. You're just remembering that you're this great thing. So everything that's telling you you're not this great thing is what's going to be going away. And I can't think of anything greater than that. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Can you share with us November, December? What's, um, what's in store for us? Yeah, I have to look at my calendar because I, I handwrite everything. And oh, wow. uh, there's so many things that come in that it's impossible yeah. for me to uh, remember all of it. But yeah, <laughs> oh, that's November exciting. and December are, are major as well. So October, we have several influxes. I'm actually, after this is done, I'm going to be doing my October update. I'm going to be like, welcome to October, even though it's uh, September 26th right now, because the energy started yesterday for the pre-waivers. And for the pre-pre-waivers, we've been going through it for the last two weeks, stacking on top of all these other experiences. Actually, someone was asking me, they're like, so why do you do the updates? And I said, you know, someday, someday I'm going to be like, update. October 1st through October 31st, really, really intense energy. And that'll be it. But the energies are, are so different and they affect things differently that it, it makes sense to separate them now. Mm -hmm. But I mean, eventually, literally, we're just going to be in a pressure cooker melting away the illusion. But here's the coolest part about the pressure cooker melting away illusion. It never hurts truth, ever. So if you are going through an experience, it's because something is not true in your life. That's it. That is the core value. Be aware of that. If anything happens, it's happening for you, never against you. And it's something, and you, you'll realize it eventually. Whether you realize it in that moment or not is totally okay if you don't. Wow. But it's never going to pull on truth. It never has and it never will. That's, that's the truth of this world. It has never pulled on truth. My, people might have killed truth in the past. That was a thing. It's not a thing anymore. Actually, people are going to be celebrating truth. They already started. But it's going to be the most precious thing in the world. And here's another thing to be very aware of. The truth can never be spoken, only heard in the silence. That's it. Truth can never be spoken. My truth can be spoken. Your truth can be spoken. But it's a part of truth. And there's always something behind it, which is why listening is so much more powerful is because you can hear the truth, just not in other people's words, but in the energy and the passion and the, the value that is created. Yeah. So yeah. to answer your question, right now we are at a current of 61 data points per hour. That is really high. This year we started out as, I think it was like 23 or 22. So we have grown a lot per hour. And keep in mind, one data point equals one hour to the human mind. So for all those people who are like, time seems broken, it really is. It is so incredibly broken right now. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> wow, right? That's, that's over two months per, like, God, that's just, it, it breaks my mind to think about <laughs> trying to allocate time as time once was because it's never going back ever yeah so to give yeah. you an idea of how it's never going back ever let's fast forward and look at some really great events so by the end of november or actually by the end of october we'll be at 64 per hour naturally okay right okay then by the end of november we'll be at 66 by the end of december we'll be at 68 by the end of january we'll be at 74 by the end oh. of february we'll be at 80 by the end of March, we'll be at 86. By the end of April, we'll be at 92. And by May, we're going to be sitting at 95. So Holy smoke. Oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> and here's the coolest part. Truth automatically processes information and data. It's, it's instant. So the only time that information gets stuck is it gets stuck against illusion. So even though the current is getting higher and higher and higher, it's actually just meaning more and more clarity for those that are living their truths. So if you are having ascension symptoms, if you're having difficulty in your mind, not your body, your body's going to go through stuff. Your body is a conglomeration of all of the karma of the past. And it is detoxing because of that. But eventually, the stream of information is going to go clearly through you so brilliantly and beautifully 
that you will know everything because you'll be part of everything. And you'll remember that you're part of everything. But your body has to be able to allow that transference to run through it. And right now it pushes up against it, which is why we get inflammation, which is why we get migraines. We have vomiting, nausea, all those fun things. Diarrhea is pretty common too, because your body is literally going like this and it doesn't know how to handle it. So there's some pretty cool techniques that will help physically. Again, mm -hmm. mentally, if you were having anything come up in a wave, that's really good. Pay very, 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 very close attention to your mental state during that process. Because whatever is a lie in your life is being highlighted. And the sooner you let that go, the easier it is you're going to flow through the months. And it's going to come into May and you're going to be like, this was the greatest lifetime ever. Mm. But it might not feel like that if it's pushing against an illusion in your mind. So be aware of that. Body-wise, shaking. I cannot tell you how important that is jumping jacks or star something. I don't know what people call them. Someone said what they are in another country, but it's something star something, but it's I literally jumping, jumping like this yeah. up and down. Yeah. And when you do that, you're actually breaking up excess energy. Here's another really powerful technique. People. Yes, exactly. Qigong is, is extremely helpful, mm -hmm. but here's what I'm going to give you some advice on. Don't do it as someone else's flow. Same thing with yoga. Everything that you do, do it intuitively. Bring your body along in the experience. So if you feel like, oh, you know, I should stretch my arm, stretch your arm. That's you and your body coming into unity together to change the world for you. Wow. Do that more. So I created something I call movements where I just allow myself to set a timer for like 10 minutes or whatever and just move around. Sometimes I will literally do nothing for 10 minutes. I'll just lay on my back and do like starfishes. Like it, it doesn't matter because mm -hmm. it's not about what I do. It's about why I do it. And I'm setting aside a set amount of time for my body to do what it needs to do with me and teach me how to handle it. And that is one of the greatest things you're ever going to do. All of the teachings, all of the techniques that are out there right now that are not your own, that's cool. That's fine. That's wonderful. Make them your own. Now it's great. Now it's grand. Now it's wonderful in a whole new level. Take what you've learned and apply it to you. Don't take what you've learned and make it you. That's it. <laughs> wow. So as we move forward, that's my best advice. Thank you. Everything out there, like if you have a Qigong master or anything like that, that's awesome. Be grateful that that person exists in your life. But find a way to make it you. Make it you. Make it your own, mm -hmm. you know? Because mm -hmm. in the end, that's all we're trying to do is be ourselves, right? So mm -hmm. if you're doing something else for someone else or someone else's way for you, you're not really being you. But if you mm -hmm. take someone else's way and you make it your own and then you do it for you, oh, man, talk about magic. But it's really simple. Move your body a lot because all those extra data points that you're taking on, they have to be processed. The other thing is have resources for your body. And I've said this a few times for anyone that can't afford to buy like the nice products out there that change your life and all that jazz. That's totally cool. Get a picture of it, set it down, spend time meditating with it. It's just as valuable. In fact, I would argue that essences are maybe even more powerful because you're not becoming reliant on the neurochemistry. You're instead activating it within yourself. Here's the coolest thing I can tell you. I have fasted for over a month with no food, no water. I'm not saying this to be grandiose or anything like that. I'm saying it because humanity says it's not possible. But the truth is I did it, and therefore it is possible. Now, do I ever want to do it again? No, I love pizza. I will never do that to myself again. But the thing is... <laughs> I could, and I wanted to understand the limits of humanity, what we were actually capable of versus what we were taught. Mm. And so all of these resources that you are supposed to have in your body that you're told that you have to consume, you don't. You actually have them all within you. Now, am I saying go and fast for a month right now? Absolutely not. Actually, I would never recommend that to anyone, ever. But if you feel called to, and you've never fasted before, start out very slow. I have a video on this, but just set a timer for five minutes. Set the food in front of your body that you're going to eat in five minutes. And 
instead of eating it right away, giving into that urge, talk to your body and be like, hey, body, look, this food is right here. We are not starving. We are not going to die. In five minutes, if you still want this, I will eat it. Why do you want it? Let's talk. Let's have a chat. And your body will start to share with you all kinds of things. It might be hunger pains. It might be all of these things. And if it's a hunger pain, that's cool. Just start tapping that area. Be like, okay, I'm going to go ahead and put light back in that area now. Put your hands on your body. Generate light. It's very easy. Just send love to that area. It doesn't even take like a Reiki degree or any special energy. Nothing. Just put your hand on your body and send love. Super easy. And then your body might say, you know what, actually, that was all I was really wanting was to be loved and to feel like I was loved. So thank you for loving me. I don't need the food anymore. And you'll learn a lot. But when we eat because we believe that we have to eat because someone taught us that we have to eat, we're not eating for ourselves anymore. We're eating for someone's belief of what we should be. So as you move through October, find a way to be you in all ways. If you don't feel like cutting your hair, don't cut your hair. Don't cut it for anyone else. If you don't feel like shaving, don't shave. Choose to follow your own flow. Choose to be yourself. Choose to no longer play the illusion of spirituality or the illusion of perfection. There was one other thing that actually, since I said that, my timer thing says 2.32, so we're over by a lot. But this is uh, something that's really important. So there's one way to see a false prophet in everything that is. Now, you judging the false prophet makes you one, so it's not worth it. But <laughs> when you see one, just walk away. It's very simple. And I'm going to tell you how. Are you ready? This is the easiest thing. If someone talks long enough, they're going to answer this question. So if someone believes very strongly spirituality is, that's awesome. Congratulations. You found someone that is a true teacher. If someone believes very strongly, spirituality, if, walk away, right away, walk away. Because if spirituality requires something else other than is, there's something misunderstood somewhere, somehow. And that's okay. It's not your job to change that person. But you walking away for your own reasons might be what needs to happen for that person. If you believe spirituality is vegetarianism or veganism or anything at all, could be spirituality is meditation. Or if you're not spiritual, you don't meditate. All these things, right? That's fine. It's okay that they believe that. You don't have to. And I, I cannot stress this enough. Your teacher's way of being is your teacher's way of being. And it's perfect until they say otherwise. Your way of being is your way of being, and it's perfect until they say otherwise. If your teacher knows better how to be you, they would have been you. So spirituality is the end. Spirituality, if you're this or that, or is not true. It's not a true statement. The closest thing that you can do is put an equal here. Spirituality equals spirituality. To me, and again, to me, my definition of spirituality is the overall goodness of a person. So goodness for me is defined as being yourself. That's it. If someone is doing something that I don't agree with, I can still see them as good, not evil. That's it. There's no polarity there. Belief is that if something is good, then something must be evil. But I just think things are good. I do believe that greatness exists, but it's rare. And that when I see greatness, I celebrate it so deeply because it's so beautiful and so rare. But if greatness was everywhere, it wouldn't be something I could celebrate at the level I do yet. So that's why my world isn't always great. Someday, I do believe the world will only be greatness. But I also know I'm not worthy of it right now, and that's okay. And that is true humility, being in the space of knowing those things. So as we move forward the false prophets are going to be dethroned. We're going to come into something called total disclosure on the 28th of October. And it is the process of us remembering us and all that we have been. And this is so important because I'm not saying you remembering you. I'm saying us. I'm saying everything that we have worked on together in all of our lives 
is going to begin to come back to us. We are going to be crossing a threshold that removed our memories. And it's important to understand that you chose to cross that threshold and have your memory removed, knowing that you had enough valor and integrity to find your way back. And not only would you find your way back, but you would be an example of the process so others would find their way back. That process finally comes to a completion on the 28th of October. And we cross that threshold. Does that mean we're all going to remember instantly? No. But it means we're going to begin to. And that beginning is something I personally have waited for and dreamed of my whole life. I knew the moment I was here that I was here early. And I made the best of it. But that is when my reality begins and the dream that I have had begins to take form. And I, I have a feeling that I'm not the only one. Yeah. Good feeling. True feeling. Um, you brought me to tears. Because, as always, it's the simple things, right? It's, it's when you say simple truths they go right through me, they reverberate inside of me. And you said something about how we all moved into the forgetting because we knew that we could remember. Yeah. We knew we could do this. That's why we came, because we knew that we could do this. And, you know, so many times in the past, we have spoken about... Um, the truth of who you are, connecting with the truth of who you are. You've just laid it out so perfectly for us today. The simple truth, just be you. Be you as fully as you can be. And I invite everybody in this moment to be as fully you as you've ever been. And the amazing thing is, is that when you dare to do that and you dare to truly become present as presence, inside your body, inside your beingness, you'll notice that there's actually a room that wasn't there before. Like there's more room for you to expand into just by bringing your awareness into your beingness. And I invite everybody right now to do this collectively. It literally takes a moment. Yeah. Just on the next breath to occupy yourself as presence more fully than you've ever dared to before in the past. And when you're there, then just expand just, just a little bit and you'll realize there's actually a lot more room for expansion that somehow eluded you. Somehow you didn't see that that was available too. And you get to fill that space also. Yeah. And then the next time there's even more space. It's so yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. I spent so my whole you. life getting to where I am. And the course I'm in currently is called Transcendental Presence. It took me three years to write this course, 13 years of courses to get to this course and three years to write this course itself. And it's the final level of transcendence is presence. And I think that is so relevant that like, this is where we are. This is what we're learning to embody. This is the space because this course has changed my life. It's different than anything I've ever done and ever before. And I, the way I wrote it, I wrote it completely different than anything I've ever done before. And it's just been mind blowing because what presence is and what we believe presence is are so different than, than each other. Like you, if you were to define presence and then you were to live presence, they would be so far apart that you can't even imagine the divide. And that's what I love about this course is it's putting me back together with presence and each practice brings me into deeper presence. And then the next day I'm like, holy crap, I can expand more. And my bones aren't dislocating or anything. Like I'm actually better and healthier than I've ever been because presence is a natural state of being. We just forgot. But that's why I'm looking forward to the end of October because humanity begins to remember the value of presence and the value of our being. And like, that's, that's where we're going, Carrie. Like we're going home <laughs> and that means going inward into ourselves and remembering because home is a state of being. And that's where we're going yeah so exactly. it's just it's incredible i i feel called to i know that we're way over on time but i feel called to like we're open good. for like five minutes of questions because it feels like there's yeah. something that someone wants cool. to ask that's really important for everyone so if you're okay with that 
Let's yeah, just absolutely. Like a few questions. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So if I'll let you is, choose the uh, questions. Okay. If there is anybody with that burning question, then Jason's just given you the opportunity to go ahead and ask that burning question. So please do do that. Um, there is a beautiful, while I'm waiting for a question to pop up, there's that beautiful saying about we're walking each other home. And I truly, yep. through this conversation, truly feel that that's what we are doing. I wanted to tell a cool story while we're waiting for a question. So yeah. I was in the Marine Corps. A lot of people don't know this, but I ended up tearing all the muscles from the back of my neck all the way down my spine and was unable to use my arms. And it was a really, really painful. All the nerves and muscles were destroyed. And at the time, there was a lot of things going on that weren't necessarily, I would say, copacetic. So what happened was instead of getting a ride from the base at Oceanside to the airplane after I was honorably discharged for medical reasons, I was let go with a ton of other injured veterans and we had to walk ourselves home, so to speak. <laughs> and that was one of the most powerful things because, I mean, people had like broken feet, they had like broken legs, they had like missing arms. It was like really, 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 really hard because we were all broken. But together, we found a way to get down enough that we saw a cab and we were able to get home and it was fine. But it was that letting go of that last level because mm -hmm. the Marine Corps did a really great thing for me. It broke me completely. <laughs> like everything of value that I thought I had, anything that I was good at before, I couldn't remember. I couldn't figure out how it worked. Everything was gone. And in that moment, after it was over, I was given an opportunity to find that I was still great, that I was still something of value. Because even though I didn't have arms, I had legs. So people could lean on me. And even though they didn't have legs, they had arms so they could hold. So we like became this, this group. And I think that that experience is the reason that we all made it out. Because had we not been given that experience, we wouldn't have had value anymore. We would have been stripped of all of our value and all of our purpose through the process. So at the end, that opportunity that was actually hard and almost impossible actually gave us worth again because we could see that we were still valuable and that we could still help people. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to go deep into all that other stuff, but that's the value of walking each other home is each step that you take with someone, you become mm -hmm. valuable and they become valuable. And that worth inherently comes online again. So do we have any questions yet? Mm. Yeah. Um, we have got uh, two. The question okay. that the question that came through first, and it's the one that um, really caught my eye. It's a question that I know is uh, something easy for you to answer. And the question is, how do I know what my real me is like? That's from Jinnia. Awesome. I love it. So take time. I like to set timers personally, but set a timer if you choose to for like five minutes or whatever, whatever number you feel called to do, and just open yourself to meeting yourself. That's it super easy. And whatever you have as an experience is totally perfect. And you don't let anyone else tell you otherwise, you will evolve from there into something greater as you continue to practice getting to know you. And it might be messy at first, especially if you haven't ever done it before. And that's okay too. It might have a lot to say and that's okay too. And it might not even be you that comes at the beginning and that's okay too, because the you that you are might've been lost and you're now in the process of putting it back together. There is no wrong way to find yourself other than to let someone else tell you who you are. And even then it's not necessarily wrong. It just kind of spins you around in circles for a while. Can I give, give one more question? Oh yeah, that's, that's fine. I, I have like a little okay. bit more. Okay. Could you tell us more about the organization you started in 55 locations over the world? What was it called again? I'd love to know more about it. That's from what was it called? Uh, Center for Expansion. Yeah. And we're building 55 all over the world. The first one is going to be in Anna, Texas, most likely. If everything continues to go well like it is, then we'll be breaking ground in December. The organization is called Masters of the Void Organization. And the whole purpose is to master void state, which is one of the very first levels of cloud-like. So a lot of people have been experiencing this space of purposelessness and they feel like they don't have their own thoughts anymore because they don't have thoughts and they feel like 
the world's scary because they have to make choices for themselves instead, that's, that's void state. Void state is where there is nothing but what you create. And while that is the very first step and it is very challenging and a lot of people choose not to go there because they have to create their own purpose and their own value in the world, it is also one of the most beautiful things you'll ever do because everything you do from there is in total responsibility or you end up below that again. And then you have to cross back into void state and then you go into choosing something and then you go back down. And then, like I said, it's the bear. And, you know, you're gonna climb, you're gonna fall, you're gonna climb, you're gonna fall. But those who choose to master the void are opening themselves to readiness within themselves to explore things they didn't even know could exist. And the goal for the Centers for Expansion is to create a place where you can cultivate greatness. And what I love about the Centers for Expansion's vision is greatness doesn't come from spiritual classes. That's my thing. Greatness comes from the opportunities that spiritual classes can create from the collaboration between you and others. I'm going to be doing an event called Odyssey in November. And the thing I love about it is it's not leaders. It's leaders and leaders and leaders, but there aren't special guests or anything like that. It's just, we're all going and we all know we're going to meet lots of really cool people and have great collaborations. It's going to be spontaneous and there's no schedule. So it's just like, Hey, I'm showing up. I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> going to be awesome. And wow. we all paid for our ticket, including the person who actually is doing the whole thing. Like none of us are doing it to make money. We're just going and we're going to have fun and it's going to be great. But wow. that's what I'm talking about. That's like the new level is us realizing that we all have something to contribute. And that's what Center for Expansion means. It's a space where we can gather to expand together. And it's going to be amazing. There's going to be, I think probably 30 houses that are going to be resort housing. They're little tiny containers that we took and we repurposed so that they're not trash just sitting around and we're going to rebuild the whole thing and it's going to be incredible. But the vision is to build 55 of them around the world so that people have places to gather together to realize their own greatness. And it's all love donation based. So it will be something that everyone can afford. And we're even going to have a love donation restaurant on the property. So people who can't afford food can afford food because they can sit there and eat if they need to. And it's really just about contributing back to the world. So, mm. Wow. Well, 55 all over the world. That's something to look forward to. Thank you, Jason Estes, for your time, your love, your beauty. Thank you for sharing it with us so freely. Thank you to everybody who has been here. Um, Jenya did ask a follow-up question. How do I recognize that it's me? And I'll just answer quickly, Jenya. Um, the more you spend time in that stillness, the more you will find that in that stillness, there is one consistent thing. And when you notice that one consistent thing that's always there every time you tune into that stillness, that's you. Yeah. Um, go on over I to have, my website. Yeah. Huh? That's, it, would, it really is. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. I would say the other thing is not to be afraid or fear mm. not finding yourself the first time. Because every time that you have a willingness to look for yourself mm. is a step towards progress. And that's mm. really what life is. Like, the first time I found myself, it wasn't me, and I didn't realize it, and it took me years to figure it out. But that process taught me who I actually was, and there's nothing wrong with that process. So just be aware that as you continue to jump into yourself, like you said, that it will you'll notice there is there's always going to be that one thing that you know is you, and you feel it. You're just like, oh, whoa, this is possible. <laughs> this is incredible. Why have I not done this before? And yeah that part of you that makes you feel that, that allows you to expand in that, that's what Carrie's saying, that that's the, that, that's you. And it might be very hard to find at first, but it will be amazing. Absolutely. And it's totally worth it for anyone, so. Yeah. I was just having a quick look while you were uh, chatting that I had, was gonna give the right URL here. I've got on my website a free meditation, Jenny, that I think will be helpful to you and anybody who might want it. It's a deep relaxation. And um, the reason that I really, really love deep relaxation is because it leads you into stillness. It doesn't tell you who to be in the stillness or what to do in the stillness. It just leads you there. So I've got a free version of it, which is on my website. So my website is samadhispeaks.com forward slash free dash meditation. 
free dash meditation. Um, it's a deep relaxation it's called deep relaxation in 15 minutes. So go through the 15 minutes and at the end, when it clicks off, just stay there, just yep. stay. That's the stillness that I was talking about. And that's the stillness that you're going to find. If it's helpful for you, use that just to get you there and hang out there for as many times as you need to until you recognize that one. Thing. That's you. Nothing better, well, nothing better I could say on that, actually. That's, <laughs> that's it. I, I have a massage therapist that does that. They, they believe that they're not there to heal you. They just put your body back into neutral alignment. And mm. if it heals, it heals. But it's not them that's healing. It's your body that's healing. And that's yeah. introduction versus force right there. So yeah. thank you for yeah. giving that free. But that's oh, yeah. it's a deep relaxation. Great way to start, for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. I love it. I've got a, a longer version on my website. It's a paid version, but just use the free one to see if you like it because the free one will, will, will get you there. So everybody, thank you. Thank you for being here with me. Uh, thank you so much to everybody who's been here in the live stream with your presence. Uh, I certainly feel that this conversation has elevated me and no doubt everybody else listening. So, wonderful people. I will speak to you tomorrow. Tomorrow we've got Matthew Patty. So, for those of you who are on the full program of Heaven's Gate, um, we've got Matthew Patty with us tomorrow. Matthew Patty is giving us a beautiful talk. I've had privy to uh, just a little bit of it, and I can tell you it's something really worth looking forward to. So, I know that I will see you then. Do you have a look, for those of you who are on the Diamond Pass, do you have a look at some of the recordings? They're already up. Susan Marie's conversation is wonderful wonderful um they've all been wonderful but just if you enjoyed jason you will probably also very much enjoy john mcintosh who was the first speaker and uh john mcintosh is um a person who reminds me very much jason of the way that you frame things and phrase things he's he's got a very jason-esque way of posing things so i'm sure everybody awesome. will enjoy that very beautiful everyone thank you guys <laughs> Lots Bye. of love. Bye.